Welcome to this presentation about designing for inclusion, obviously designing cities for inclusion. So as an introduction, let's uh, think that if we want everyone to participate in public life, we must design and build an inclusive public realm that is accessible to all. Public life can't just be available to the abled, young, or healthy. Everyone navigates the built environment differently with abilities changing across a person's lifespan. The sizable global population of people with physical, auditory, or visual disabilities, autism, or neurodevelopmental, and or intellectual disabilities or neurocognitive disorders will face greater challenges if we don't begin to more widely apply universal design principles. While the legal requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act are typically met in public places like in parks, plazas, streets, and gardens in the United States, these requirements are a minimum standard for accessibility. Because of their focus on technical aspects of accessibility over experiential quality, ADA standards often result in spaces that are still very challenging for people with disabilities to access, leaving them physically and mentally disconnected from the public life. Many countries do not have basic accessibility requirements. Landscape architects and designers can apply universal design principles to create more inclusive spaces for underdeserved communities, which include those who experience communities which feature wide sidewalks and bicycle lanes, provide amenities like shops, restaurants, and medical facilities nearby, meaning those with limited range can manage and maintain many aspects of their lives independently. First of all, disabilities. One, million pe people, one billion people or 15% of the world population experience some form of disability, aging. The global population of people over 65 years of age is expected to double from 8.5% to 17% by 2050, totaling 1.6 billion people. Limited mobility. The World Health Organization estimates 75 million people or 1% of the global population require a wheelchair with nearly a third of that group unable to access them. Lack of community access. 26 million or 56% of Americans over 65 live in suburbs, while 11 million or 23% of Americans over 65 live in ruler, rural areas with limited access to public transportation. Given older Americans prefer to age in place rather than moving to a retirement community, neighborhoods must be designed for all ages and levels of mobility. Neurocognitive disorders. Cognitive disabilities like Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia are more prevalent in older, older populations. Some 44 million or 6.6% of the global population suffer from Alzheimer's. 16 million people in the US alone have cognitive disabilities diminished sensory, cognitive, and motor skills that limit people's ability to navigate public spaces. Neurodevelopmental and or intellectual disabilities. Roughly 70 million people or 1% of the world population are autistic. According to the Centers for Disease Control, one in six children in the United States have de developmental disability in 2006 to 2008. As of 2014, one in 50, nine children aged eight or 70,000 eight year olds in the US are autistic. Autistic people are often overwhelmed by visual stimulation, the, the acoustic environment, lighting and odor present within the built environment. Blindness and low vision worldwide. 1.6 billion people, 17% of the population have some form of visual disability. 217 million people, 3% of the population have a moderate to severe vision disability and 36 million people or 0.5% of the population are blind. Intersections, poorly lit spaces and sudden level changes can be dangerous for people with low vision. Deafness and, hear and hearness, hardness of hearing. Worldwide, there are 466 million people with a heal hearing disability a number expected to grow to 900 million people by 2050. Some 70 million deaf people around the world rely on visual communication sign language. There are, there are over 300 documented signed languages in, the world, in use around the world. Universal landscape planning and design ensures people with disabilities can better participate in public life. These principles which build off the center of four universal designs principles should guide the planning and design for of all public spaces, regardless of intended audience. 
First of all, accessible. All public spaces should be physically accessible to everyone, regardless of their physical, cognitive, or mental ability. Specific areas of public spaces should, shouldn't be designed for people with specific disabilities. All public spaces should work for everyone. Comfortable. A feeling of safety is the baseline for feeling comfortable, but an inclusive sense of belonging helps everyone to feel comfortable in space. Universal design offers options for people with a range of abilities and disabilities fostering feelings of belonging. Participatory. Landscape archi architects and designers should always co-design with people with disabilities. Abled landscape architects and designers won't know all of the difficulties that people with disabilities experience environment, in environments designed without them being in mind. Disabled landscape architects and designers can also bring their unique experience and understanding to create more accessible spaces. Note, some people such as those with advanced dementia may not be able to, cl to clearly articulate their challenges with the built environment. In these instances, landscape architects must work with healthcare providers to create solutions. Ecological. Exposure to nature and green space is proven to provide mental, cognitive, and physical health benefits for people of all ages and abilities. Universal design should provide these benefits throughout the built environment, creating spaces people want to visit and spend time in while fostering ecological resilience and supporting biodiversity. Legible. Clear and understanding, understandable design with very legible multi-sensory signage and, and signals help people of all ages and abilities to understand how to move through spaces. Delineating spaces of places of movement and relaxation can help people understand how spaces are meant to function as well. Multisensory, navigation and built environment depends most entirely on visual cues. Incorporating design elements that can be accessed through different senses provides other systems of navigation. For example, the use of auditory, hepatic, and textual cues can aid in wayfinding and enrich experiences for all. Predictable. Maintaining the same clear understandable design cues through a public space creates predictable environments of people of all ages and abilities, increasing comfort and safety. This article uh, was narrated um, by myself and I narrated it from the American Society of Landscape Architects and it was written for professional practice for universal uh, design.